I was at another meet and the baseball players of that school were volunteering and they were just mesmerized by what is going on. Like yeah. there's so much going on yeah. and they're like, they're just like holding, <laughs> you know, a flag or they're just like making sure that the, the high jump, you know, bar goes back up. And like, I was just listening to them. I don't understand what's going on, but this is intense. Yeah. It's insanity, you know, yeah. and. Joining us in the studio is a distinguished figure in the world of collegiate athletics, the esteemed Matt Van Lierup. Matt is not just any coach. He's the director of track and field and cross country at Wingate University, where he's been steering the course of success across six sports. During his illustrious career, Matt has transformed the athletic landscape at his prior programs, most recently at the University of Mount Olive, leading his teams to an impressive tally of 27 NCAA Division II regional championships, 91 All-American performances, and astounding 50 52 regional and conference championships. His remarkable ability to cultivate excellence and his commitment to the athlete's growth both on and off the field have earned him numerous accolades and a reputation as a visionary in the realm of track and field and cross country. Today, he's here to share his insights, experiences, and the driving force behind his unwavering dedication to the sport. So fasten your seatbelts and prepare to be inspired by the one and only Matt Van Lierup. Wow, that, was a lot of, that was a lot of nice stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So great to have you on. Um, when I was here, we didn't have track. We yeah. only had cross country. True. So, yeah. you know, what um, I guess the the creation of the track program. Um, tell me about kind of what that is like, because, I mean, even you weren't the, the first coach here for track, but like it, it's close enough. You know, you're, you're close enough to be the, the, the first coach to get it ongoing. So tell me about like growing a program from the, the beginning. Okay. Uh, well, when I first got here, uh, I, I, I think the program was more like a jumps um, and sprints program. And the type of program that I like to build starts with like a distance running core, like a cross country team core. And then I build around that. Uh, at the previous institutions I was at, that's what I did there as well. It's I, I basically, it's almost like I sometimes get accused of like, oh, you're all about distance runners. That's all you, and it's not what we do. It's like it first looks like that where we create this really strong group of distance runners who of course they have that cross country season, but then indoors they can score in five events and outdoors they can score in five events. So it's like, okay, indoors, that's a third of the events and outdoors, that's a quarter of the events. So that's a lot of points in those two seasons. Plus you got this whole other season that's cross country. So that's the core. And once you build that and start having success, then you start adding in the throws and the jumps and the hurdles and the sprints and all of that. And those pieces then become this huge juggernaut, you know, of a team. Uh, But like they see that success, people start to say, Hey, what's going on over at that program that's doing well in this other season and then also doing well indoors and outdoors. And then they will come on and make it even better for those indoor and outdoor seasons. So, so six sports, you know, that seems like a lot to manage. Can you walk me through the kind of these six sports and the differences between how those kind of operate? Okay. Um, That's a big question uh, <laughs> so um obviously cross country is in the fall that's men and women you know the do sports there um and, and what in, in collegiate cross country what does that kind of entail um well the men run 8k to 10k is that is that basically yeah. what you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. uh the men run the 10k during the uh championships for okay. regionals and nationals and women are 6k all the way through there's an occasional 5k race okay. but we tend to stay away from that yeah is there different, um, like, is every course a different length, or do they try and keep it generally the same? It's supposed to, <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to be the same. Um, <laughs> a perfect example is this year, uh, the 10K at the regional championship was about 9,600 meters, so it was... PRs left and right. Oh, my gosh, it was crazy. <laughs> and then our uh, conference championship, we had, like, the the course was off again. I don't know what it was. You know, I, I wasn't the one that created it. And we're talking, we had like the 10 fastest times in the nation. You know, it was, it was ridiculous. Oh yeah. We're, we're the best. I mean, (laughs) if we just wrote on 9,000 meter courses, we're going to crush it. It was, and that's, um, so it's supposed to be, you know, uh, women's supposed to be 6k allowed to be 5k. 
Um, and races before the championships, I mean, you can go down to 4K for the mm-hmm. ladies, you can go down to 6K for the men, but we just don't. Gotcha. Go to those meets. So you got you got men's and women cross country, and then we move into kind of the winter, you know, kind of world. And what what are those uh, sports for you? Yeah, that's indoor uh, men and women. You know, indoor track and field. It basically starts in December. You got one or two meets that you can do. Sometimes we do them. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes okay. you do one, two, zero, and then you get this break in between, and then you start again. You know, January third, second week of January. Uh, some programs come back even earlier, but we like to get back and get settled gotcha. before we get going. And with, with indoor track, um, what are some of – it's not the same as outdoor track, what you would see on the Olympics. What are what are kind of the main, I guess, events and, and stuff like that for the indoor? Um, I mean, the big difference – I mean, everybody loves that 100-meter dash. Right. You know, Isn't uh, it a 60? It's a 60. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's a little shorter. Uh, and there's, you know, there's no 400 hurdles indoor. That would be a wild event if that existed, <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's no steeplechase indoor. They're not going <laughs> to dig a hole, you know, in the middle of an indoor facility. You put uh, kiddie pools. Right. Yeah. That would be, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. I would love to see it actually. Uh, I would love to see a steeplechase indoor. It'd be hilarious. Um, and, and dangerous. So, um, these would be our, our alumni event where we have a steeplechase yeah. indoor. You That'd get to make so some, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, yeah. But so it's things like that. Um, of course you have the 200, the 400, the 800 instead of the 1500, it's the mile indoor. Um, there's no 3000 outdoors. There's 5,000, both indoor outdoors, 10,000, but, uh, just outdoors. Sorry. Um, 110 hurdles, 100 hurdles, men and women, that turns into 60 hurdles indoor, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, shorter. Generally, indoors are shorter, more sprinty. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you still have your yeah. distance stuff, but the distance guys actually move into a, a sprint yeah. distance for them, I guess, yeah. was well, easy to say. just don't do the 10K. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> and then um, throws, certain things you can't throw indoor. You know, you're not going to be throwing the hammer, <laughs> you know, or the javelin or the discus. So it's shot put. And then, um, you know, America, the collegiate system, and uh, Sweden are the only ones that do the weight throw. Hmm. That was kind of like created for. Interesting. Because it's like, what else are we going to do indoor? We can only do the shot put. <laughs> we like, want to throw some stuff. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> women throw 25 pounds, men throw 35 pounds. It's like a ball in a bag. And it's. I've never seen that. Dangerous. Actually. It doesn't go as far as a hammer, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's another difference, hmm. you know. So you go from indoor, and then when does the transition to outdoor? Begin? That's uh, end of February, uh, beginning of March. So uh, indoor is a short season. Yeah, uh, if if we were not to compete in December, indoor is like a month. Wow! So it's very fast, and then technically it's like two and a half months if you add that December in. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a weird situation with that. Like basketball just goes all the yeah. way through. They yeah. have like a week off for Christmas and yeah. New Year's. Um, yeah, we don't do that. Like but we can't run on a full stomach. Right, we right. Gotta, right. We get a rest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we um, then slide. People go to nationals. You know, we have some people, you know, go in the nationals each season. Sorry, each indoor. And um, then right after that, we jump right into outdoor. But then there's obviously people who don't qualify. So after conferences, they will then slide into, I'm training for outdoor now. Hmm. And then outdoor is what you generally see on the Olympics, obviously, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So, uh, with, with all of that, that seems like it's a lot to manage. Um, how, <laughs> how do you, how do you actually manage a, because, you know, like I played football, football is fall. And then, you know, obviously we get a little rest and we get spring ball, but it's not like you're playing games. Like yeah. you guys are playing technically games, you know, the whole year. How do you manage yeah. that? Well, I have a wonderful support staff and that's not only, you know, my assistants um, and my head coaches, uh, you know, Paul Dominic, you know, cross country head coach and Jackie Kirby for the uh, track and field head coach. And then all the uh, uh, event coaches, you know, Devon Cooper, Nisha Wilshire, Candy Lockett, and we have GAs. Um, but then sports staff, you know, the administration here, mm-hmm. uh, the SIDs, the athletic trainers, like there's so many yeah. helping. Um, but I would say the biggest difference between what we do and what everybody else does, especially when you really take cross country seriously, and it is actually like a, because th- there's some track programs who are like cross country. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But when we really take all three seasons seriously, there's no, 
real downtime. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no chance to take a breath. Um, I'm sure you have certain people that you're trying to peak at certain stages. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they kind of have a, you know, yeah. a cycle as far as where yeah. they're going to perform well. And of course. Not. Yeah. Were you more so talking about the, the athlete and how they do it or how the coaches manage? Uh, right? A little bit of both. Okay. I mean, I, I yeah. think, you know, when you're a lot of people listening, don't realize that like you're the director of the program and you have head coaches for each yeah. of yeah. these. And so you have to kind of manage. <laughs> there's right. a lot of moving pieces yeah. of what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought you were talking. Yeah. Right. And, um, and we have almost 200 student athletes <laughs> on the team. So, so many moving parts. Um, and then, of course, you know, when other programs are recruiting, we're still in season. Mm-hmm. And when other crew programs are doing spring ball or fall ball, whatever you want to call it, you know, we're in season. And so winter break turns into recruiting time and summer mm-hmm. turns into recruiting time or, or doing camps. And so it's just it's just all the time. Yeah, and you stay know, busy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with the, the student athlete, it's um, there are certain people who are not going to be doing anything during the fall. That's, you know, like the track only mm-hmm. people. And then we try not to have our distance runners who are three seasons be going all the time crazy. Every single race mm-hmm. we will take certain people and let's say there's six cross country races. Maybe people do three of those, mm-hmm. you know, indoor and outdoor, let's say a distance runner, instead of doing every single meet, you know, maybe they'll do two meets before the championship mm-hmm. just to make sure they're safe and healthy and right and ready to rock and roll. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, uh it's, it's interesting coming from, you know, a traditional sport and hearing how, you know, technically an athlete could play three sports here, mm-hmm. you know, if they run cross country and then do distance type stuff, yeah. I mean, they're probably oh, yeah. a, a three sport athlete and yes. you don't hear yes. that in college. Right. It's yeah. Very rare. yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right. Very, yeah. very valuable for the school. <laughs> well, I bet. You can say, <laughs> especially when you have football. Um, and then it's got, you got to kind of like lean towards, well, how do you, uh, supplement that on the women's side? It's like, well, a cross country runner is three, right? Technically it's like three people, but it's one person. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. No. And that's with, you know, title nine and, and yeah. all of those yeah. restrictions with scholarships and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, when you're recruiting, you know, I, I've, I know the football world. You know, the recruiting side of that, like, how do you go find talent for running? Like, how do, what do you it look is, for? Yeah. What is something that's like, wow, that person's going to be a great runner? Right, right. I mean, it has, to be quite honest, become easier okay. with the technology that we have mm-hmm. today. I would not want to be my coach, you know, back in the right. day when there was no social media, there's no cell phones, there's just... There's no email, you know, that stuff didn't even exist. So now like we go on a website and we just go to like the top people in the state, you know, (laughs) there they are. There's all these, you know, marks and like, oh, they're a sophomore. Don't bother with them. You know, and we just see what they can do. And then if we're interested in that, we'll get in touch with them. And if we want to see what they can actually do, you know, face to face, then we'll go out and check them out. Hmm. But, you know, we're not watching game tapes yeah, you know, yeah. Not, that's what no, I was like yeah, do you guys no. like watch their races no, or something I mean, they send us videos of you know um I guess the sprinters and throwers you can see stuff yeah. like that to see what their form yeah. is but like a cross country runner it's like well, <laughs> time is the time yeah, you know yeah. you see what it is the problem is is like is the course accurate you gotcha. know in cross country yeah. and so then we use track we're like okay what do you do in the mile what do you do in the two mile you know they send 5k times to us or we see 5k times. We don't know if the course is short, right? Hilly, muddy, right. windy that day. We yeah. don't know what's going on. So. Yeah. I've always, you know, after I graduated, I, I got big into CrossFit. I owned a CrossFit, uh, gym with other stuff. And, you know, I always thought like normal sports, basketball, baseball, like that's the pinnacle of athlete. And now like, no, I just want to be able to go run far. Right. Like right, I want to yeah. run far and fast. I'm not built for that. Like yeah. my body size is not a, a far yeah. and fast runner. So I'm always so envious when I see the the guys that are like, yeah, I just ran a, a 10K at a, uh, you know, six and a half minute, six minute, five minute mile pace. I'm mm-hmm. like, how do you do that? Like I can't right. even do that once. Right. It's impossible. Right. And then some of the, some of the people on the men's cross country team are running, you know, Sub four thirty. Yeah, you know, it's for that. wild when you when you when you get out and you like go out and run yourself. You're like, they just lapped me right, in right, a mile. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> it's it's four laps yeah. and they went around me once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it gets pretty crazy, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, I used to say uh, things that used to upset other sports where I would say things like, um, you know, you can't play track and field, mm -hmm. you know, or everything else is just a game, yeah. you know, and uh, I would, people don't like it when I say things like that. So, but it is kind of like that. It's like you, you can't stop and get some oxygen or, you know, there's no time out. You just got to keep yeah, on like I, doing I, I really played for like three seconds at a time. <laughs> like Three seconds <laughs> off, 40 seconds right, off. Right. It's like, it would, that'd be crazy. You know? That's, that's <laughs> football. 10K, it's 10K. And then you three go seconds. rest for 10 minutes on the sideline yeah, when the defense goes. Yeah, right. And But of course, you know, I'm, I'm never going to say those things, you know. I mean, you've been out of football for a while, so you're not going <laughs> to jump across the table and hit me. But like, I would never say those things in front of like football players. Yeah, they no, it's it's upset. when you're when you're playing it, you're like, yeah, no, this is the hardest thing. And then after you start getting some reflection, it's like, man, how do they do that? Yeah. That is that's wild. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. When um when when you're kind of trying to get a team going because. All, you know, your traditional sports is a team sport. You guys are on the field playing against one opponent at the same time. Yours yeah. is opposite. It's generally an individual playing against or participating individually while other individuals yeah. go. And then your scores combine to make a team score. So how does yeah. that kind of play into like mentality as far right. as what you do? And it's, it's funny how it's sort of like football, but it's not. It's yeah. like there's all these different things. Like there's linebackers and a quarterback and wide receivers yeah. where you need different coaches to teach different ways of doing things. So you've got the jumps coach and the throws coach, different. But then in football, you kind of bring them all into the same field and they're doing yeah. this thing. They're doing different things. Like you can watch it and yeah. see who's winning or losing. Right. Exactly. And it's like you put all those different – parts into one and you get that football up and down the field, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're track and field. It's the same, but instead of bringing them all together, they're all over the track <laughs> and they're doing it at the same time. So as like a one coach, you have to be like trying yeah. to pay attention to everybody. Of course, all your event coaches are mm -hmm. with, you know, the people as they're doing it. Um, but that is a, it's a very hard question yeah. to answer yeah. because how do you build uh, that excitement? Like how do you build a team? Yeah. You know, like, and it's, it's all about the culture. And, and that's what we started here where we created this culture in the beginning of where we were making this promise, like it's going to be a championship team. We're going to do really special things. You just got to trust us. It's mm -hmm. going to happen. And then it's all about just getting better. You know, it's not necessarily like, let's say we want to win a conference championship. Maybe we don't. But what if everybody got better and we still didn't win? That's still a success. So it's right. everyone from the number one person to the number last person on the mm -hmm. team. And everybody is always excited for everything. Like even when the number last person gets a PR, the entire team is pumped. They, they won. Yeah. Like they yeah. beat themselves, which that's is, you know, right. it's a game against yourself. And yeah. when all of those pieces come together, that's how the team can win. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a. Uh, I coached track for one season in, in high school, um, and it was the hardest thing for me to understand. I did jumps and throws, and I was like, what are they doing over there? Yeah. Like, how do we know if we're winning? Yeah, I'm right, like, where's right. the score coming from? Yeah. And it's it's uh, it's hard to build a team mentality because everyone, you know, it's an individual thing, but you do have a team that you've got to try and cultivate. Yeah, and you were doing, like, the most technical events. Yeah. Well, it's just because, like, hey, and, you, you guys can just go lift, and then yeah, uh, if you make them bigger and stronger, they're right. probably going to do good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but You can that, already jump high, so, you know, <laughs> just jump over that pole and you'll be good. Yeah, and, I, and some people definitely think those things, but, yeah, but as you know, it's not just... Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. learned so much in that yeah. one season. Yeah. Um, with, with uh, you know, your career, you've had quite a bit of success. Can you kind of talk about one of your, you know, fondest memories as far as, uh, you know, successes that you've had? It doesn't have to be a wing. It just, you know, some of the, the biggest memories from your, your career coaching. There are, I, I can't even pick one. Um, and I'm, I'm not even over what happened during the cross country season. Like I'm, I'm not even it's not even still believable yeah. you know, that it's like, yeah, sure. The men were second last year. And it's like, where do you go from there? And it's like, well, they did it, you yeah. know? And then like, while it happened, I was like, did that happen? Like, <laughs> like, and I was like, I was the furthest you could be from the finish line where I was out there cheering and uh -huh. I'm walking like in slow motion all the way back to the finish line. Probably took me 20 minutes <laughs> and I'm just like, still not like did that. So I, I'm not even over that yet. Yeah. I, I it's just a 
the dream. Who knows? Um, but so many um, things, gosh, I can't even, you know, I could say the first um, time that Mount Olive won the conference championship was really yeah. cool in track and field. It was outdoor track and field. It was, I had been at a previous institution where I had won five, um, helped the team win five mm -hmm. cross country conference championships and never won a track one. And when I first got to Mount Olive, I was told, um, you'll never win a conference championship and you'll never have enough women on the team so the team can qualify for the national championship. And I was like, well, those are some challenges now. They just, Thank you. just gave Thank me something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, two years later when, you know, the team won, it was like, and it wasn't just the men. Yeah. I was told the women will never have enough people. And like both genders, you know, won. Right. And so that was really special being told things you cannot do yeah. and then doing it. Right. And the way the team did it, it was just uh, so much support, you know, yeah. with each other. And like every single person was like, had this mentality where like they would put the team on their back, you know, and carry the team. So that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. What about, you know, players that, or, you know, do you, yeah, they're players, you know, um, do they, I guess what I'm trying to get at is like a memory of players that didn't necessarily have all the accolades. You know, there's a lot of unsung heroes on teams. Can you kind of recall a memory of of someone that might not be a conference championship or yeah. a, a, a all American or whatever? And, and some of those people and like what they did and why they were so impactful for the team. I mean, there are so many. <laughs> no. I think, especially <laughs> in Division Two, like a lot of people aren't recognized. Yeah, and it's like those are the ones that you remember the most. Mm -hmm. And and I think those are the more fun stories to hear right. than the ones that's like, yeah, he, you know, he ran a three fifty nine mile and won everything. Like, right. Yeah, right. we know that. Right. And and then, um, you know, like in baseball, you have those utility players. Right. You know. And there are some people, you know, on a track program that you consider like a utility person who can do everything, but maybe not as well as the top stars. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about that often. Uh, there's the people who, you know, maybe they score one point, you know, in their entire career, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that happens. Um, but gosh, so many examples. I can't even think of one <laughs> specific, right? If yeah. I knew, if I knew this question earlier, yeah. I would have had this. this prepared, the, yeah. I think this is the hardest question. Cause it's yeah. easy to remember like, yeah, yeah, we just won national championship. I might right. remember that, but like yeah. the, the ones that really make you continue coaching yeah. are the other ones. Right. And it's like, there's like literally probably thousands yeah. because you know, you have if a team of 200, you're going to have, probably 40 who are like scoring all the time and doing crazy things. And then you've got 160 who are not doing that, but there's still a huge part. And it's like, I, every year is a different 160. Right. So it's like, how could I even, you know, <laughs> pinpoint, but it is like all of those people, yeah. you know, doing everything that they do because like I mentioned before, number last, like that person is making sure number second to last is doing their yeah, job. They're pushing and that, each other. And that keeps going yeah. all the way up the line. Um, yeah, no, that, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's just interesting for people to hear, you know, you get 200 people in the program, but there's 160 every single year that might not be yeah. the, the top dog, but it's what's making the program successful. Right. Right. And that's, that is it. And it, it, I know like there are other programs where maybe they have 50 people total, you know, they have 25 men, yeah. 25 women and that's great. And that's just work, work for that. Yeah. I just love to have an army and <laughs> it's like, it's just so crazy and exciting when you're at a championship and there's just Wingate everywhere, yeah. you know, it's like the, the Jersey is everywhere and the cheering is everywhere. And when there's a, a, an event going on around the track, you've got like this entire team is just swarming yeah. every, and it's just like the environment and that, that culture of uh, support that's, and that's, what, that's those people who mm -hmm. are like, obviously they're not on the track at that time, you know, but they are there like giving that energy and that, right. that vibes. So. Yeah, it definitely, definitely makes a huge difference for the ones that are, 
you know, trying to score the points, the, the more cheering and the more right, uh, support yeah. you get definitely helps. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Wingate University athletics is second to our academics. Um, generally our, our, uh, our sports teams always have some of the higher GPAs in the entire school. Um, what are some of the things that you do to kind of promote the academics and, and make sure your, your people are graduating and, and doing as best as they can in the classroom? Just recruit smart people. That's what I, just <laughs> I mean, that's what myself. I do. I just married a smart wife. <laughs> exactly. and here I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what it become. It's, that's where it starts. You know, you, you make sure that you're bringing in people who can be successful, have the potential, but I'm, I'll always like see somebody who's talented and maybe they'll need some extra help, mm-hmm. you know, in the classroom. And I'm not going to say no, yeah. you know, to them, see what we can do and help them get that degree. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we have study hall, things like that. Obviously, we talk to them to make sure everything's OK. And it's it can be just like you're down at the track. How you doing in class? You know, yeah. as simple as that. And yeah. they say, I'm not doing well. And then <laughs> yeah, they have a, 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 a bigger conversation or they say everything's going great. And then that's not telling the truth. And that's a different conversation. But, um, you know, it's not, I mean, you give them the, it's like that horse to water thing. It's like in the beginning, we tell them how to be successful. And I, I'm like, these are the five things you do, mm-hmm. you know, and this, you'll be successful, you know, in the classroom. And it's like, they're so easy. Like one of them is like, go to class, you know? <laughs> so I, I had a, I graduated early here. I, I graduated in three and a half years. I had a, a three, six GPA. Yeah. I never did any homework. Yeah. I, I'm the first to admit it. I just sat in the front of the classroom yeah. and I showed up. Yeah. I've rarely missed class. That's huge. And it's like, yeah. well, that's how you can be successful yes. guys. Like show up and sit there and pay attention. Yeah, just absorb. Exactly. You find out what the professor wants and you give the professor what they want. And then, yeah. You get that class for that professor the next time and all the way through. And um, you're right. And that's so you use the library, every resource that's over there. Yeah. And the people who aren't successful, the people who kind of don't do those five easy things. Yeah. Right. Do you find that the people that are successful in the classroom um, and are doing those right things end up being successful down the road in their careers and their life? Everything. Like you actually see the people who are successful in the classroom are also successful on the track. And then they're just going to be contributors in society. Like yeah. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. When, um, so you came from a, a program that was doing pretty well. You know, you were, you were winning everything over there. Sure. <laughs> then you decided, you know what? I want to try out this wing at university. Yeah. What made you say, I want to check this place out and be the, the track and field head of everything yeah. running here. Oh, uh, well, it's a long story, but uh, <laughs> um, when I had first gotten to Mount Olive um, in 2009, of course, I knew of Wingate. It was actually the first competition that I ever took. Okay. Mount Olive 2 was here. Nice. And, of course, I got on campus and I looked around. And in 2009, it, was it wasn't okay. what it is now, yeah, you know? I mean, that's what yeah. I left here. It's, it's yeah. fine. And I was like, this is unfortunately still better than Mount Olive. Yeah, you know, better than Mount Olive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Going like, okay. Um and then, you know, 10 years later, obviously a lot happened mm-hmm. at Wingate. And I was always watching Wingate where it was like I, Mount Olive men in cross country are always handling the Wingate men, but mm-hmm. we have trouble with the Wingate women. And then on the track side, it's like, you know, most of the time Mount Olive is number one in the region, you know, compared to like Queens and, mm-hmm. and Wingate. Yep. Sometimes Wingate would win the conference championship in track. Sometimes it'd be Queens, but then Mount Olive at the other conference, you know, would sometimes beat Queens, you know, sometimes, you know, not. And I was always wondering, like, what is it about Wingate that's, you know, I I was there, you know, (laughs) what's going on over there? And then uh, Paul Dumanek came here as a grad student. Yep. And I was, you know, obviously still over there. And he had just been with USATF uh, for a couple of years, decided he wanted to go back to school. Literally the first week he was on campus, he calls me and he's like, if this position ever opens up, you need to take it. You need to go for it. I was like, why? He's like, they have everything you possibly need. Everything you don't have at Mount Olive (laughs) is at Wingate. Like all the facilities, every kind of resource you could possibly, you just have a swimming pool. Yeah. Like you need a swimming pool to help the runners mm-hmm. recover, you know, mm-hmm. from injuries. You even have a city down the road. You can go visit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right. And that's middle <laughs> like of nowhere, things. you know, it's like, there was so many resources and so much support. 
So he said, you, you have to do it. So literally two months later, <laughs> the it position, like it, it became available. So, you know, I went for it. And then when I got here, I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything you could possibly need. And I said to myself, if I can't figure out how to win a national championship in five years, then I have failed. Mm. It happens. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. Everything's here. Everything. You yeah. Need. Yeah. No, I mean, it, w- it, people that go and visit other places or, or actually go check it out. I mean, we're, we're closing in on some of these small D one programs as far as facilities across all athletics, you know, some places, maybe a, a baseball facility is a little nicer or, mm. you know, maybe a, a football facilities, but like across the board, I feel like the resources we have here for every sport is on par with the top. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that, um, In my opinion, (laughs) uh, Wingate is a better situation than probably 80% of D1. You know, of course, it's D1, it's D1. You know, you hear from recruits, I want to be D1. Um, People from other countries don't really care. You know, what is this D1, D2 thing? They think, okay, D1 is supposed to be better. But if you just say D1 is better, you're just missing Mm -hmm. that bigger picture because, sure, there's like the power five and there's just things that you cannot compete with. It's Mm -hmm. just out of control. But then there's so many other D ones that are just not power fives, yeah. you know. And Wingate, I believe, is just a better package, you yeah. know. And a really cool thing that happened this year in cross country um, is the men uh, took um, second at a race, is like a all D one race. And the women got 20th. And so the men took out 70 D1 teams. That's what I was going to ask. And there's a couple sports out there where D2 is sometimes better. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the competition's better, the times or scores or whatever right. might be better than D1. So is track or cross country one of those sports where, like, what's the fall off from D1 to D2? Is there, or what's the difference? Well, I mean, obviously the sprints are a little different. Yeah. I mean, what's cool about, what we do is that, you know, in every other sport, you're just head to head with one team. Mm-hmm. Well, the swimming's different, you know. Yeah, you know, and that's one that I'm thinking of. Like yeah. swimming competes against, like yeah. I, I remember when I was here, we played like Bowling Green and Marshall and yeah. stuff like that, and we were winning. Yeah, exactly. Um, and basically, like football, you're going to see just the conference. Yeah. Maybe you'll see like somebody from the region, or maybe you have one game, somebody across the country, you mm-hmm. know, something special. Um, but we can get in a competition like a pro yeah. be standing next to you, you know, it's like you could have the worst person in the That's nation cool. and the best person in the nation yeah. in the same facility at the same time. Yeah. And that, I don't know. I feel like that creates a different type of sport where yeah. it's like, you know, you want to go to these competitions where D one they're there, there mm-hmm. and you want to, compete with them and you want to see what can we do well, and then it's proven like yeah you know you're you're not special because you right. were d1 right exactly <laughs> and it's like and then people start turning their heads like Wait, what's going on over at this uh, wingate place you know um but i don't know where things fall off you said like fall off yeah like, i don't know exactly it's like when i look at d1 it's sure it's it's more dense in the in the in the top part there's more people who are good mm-hmm um, but when you take the highest level of like every event, you're going to see D1, D2, D3, the best people in every division are like kind of the same, hmm. you know? And then, but there's more of them in D1. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then there's not as many in D1 in D2 and then not as many in D3 as D2. Yeah. But the upper echelon, it's, it's like all the same. Like you'll see like the number one D3 person can hold their own, like, yeah. With anybody. And you hear stories about, oh, this person is D3 and they're in the Olympics. You know, and that happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Football, we always said it's it's one of three things. You're either, it's either 20 pounds, two inches, or one tenth of your 40 time. And that's the difference between D1 and D2. Really? Okay. Generally, that's what it is. It's like, you know, I had everything other than two more inches. Okay. If I was 6'5", then I would probably be not no. sitting here right okay. now, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's generally one of those three things. Like it's either just a little bit faster. You're a little bit bigger. You're a little bit taller. And, and that's 
the difference. So talent wise, you're playing against some really good talent. It's right. just, yeah, you it's know, there. so, you know, I, I always uh, laugh at the, well, I don't want to go D2. Right. Well, I had a pretty dang good career. Yeah. I enjoyed myself right. at D2. Do you want to sit the bench or do you want to play? Because yeah. you could play at D2. Yeah. I was literally hanging out yesterday with Paul, who was on the phone with a recruit and the question came up from the parent. Like, what is this difference between D1 and D2? And like, I, Oh, that's a question we get all the time. And it's like, ah, oh, that's 20 years I've heard stuff like that. And it's like, and then listening to Paul's response, which is always awesome, you know, it's like these questions are out there. And no matter what you say, no matter what you can prove, and you can have all of these, here's, here is a chart of showing everything. It's like some people will just be like, no, I want to just, just need to check a box. Yeah. Just, I want to be that D1 star. And, I'm not going to name any D1 schools that, <laughs> <laughs> that would be upset with me, but it's like, it's like, okay, you can go there and get beat by D2s for four years, mm-hmm. or you could go to a D2 school who takes out, you know. It's fun to win. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. Like, it, it's it's really enjoyable to win. And generally, when you come here, you're probably going to be part of a winning program. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all here. Well, Coach, I definitely appreciate your time. Is there anything else that you want to uh, say to the people listening for, you know, alumni or support? How can people help the the uh, the runners of, of Wingate University for you? Well, obviously, um, you know, making donations is always oh, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> That's <yeah>. amazing. <laughs> uh, but just coming out, like, check our schedule on the um, website and just find out where we are. And if, you know, there's people all over the nation um, – I've been out in Seattle and somebody stopped me. They saw Wingate, you know, on my shirt and they're like, Wingate, I went to Wingate. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You know, so find out where we are and just show up and just say hi to us and wear something Wingate. And everybody loves that. You yeah. Know? I think if you go out to, especially an indoor track, like those are, those are pretty intense, but if you go to a track and field, um, meet and you've never been to one, like you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Oh, There's a lot going it's on. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, there was, um, this experience that I had where I was at another meet and the baseball players of that school were volunteering and they were just, mesmerized by what is going on. Like yeah. there's so much going on yeah. and they're like, they're just like holding, you know, <laughs> a flag or they're just like making sure that the the high jump, you know, bar goes back up. And like, I was just listening to them talk, just like, I, I don't understand what's going on, but this is intense. Yeah. It's insanity, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like in baseball, it's like a lot of times you're just kind of standing around <laughs> hoping the ball doesn't come to you, you yeah. know? And it's just, there's no stopping. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, we appreciate Coach coming on here. Um, Make sure you send the podcast link. uh, Check it out on YouTube or on any of the places you get your podcast. Send it to a friend. Send it to alumni. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode.